Okay. So it's really about diagnostics, right? And um, let's talk about it, right? So these will be examples of question. However, I did promise you it'll be all multiple choice, right? So there will be all multiple choice. Now, I um, the last time there were a couple of people who said that they had problem with the word indicate. Indicate means what does it mean, right? So if I if I want you to answer positive or negative, I'm going to put in parentheses positive or negative. Other than that, it's going to be something else, okay? If you don't see parentheses next to the question that says positive or negative, it's going to be something else, okay? Much more, much more detail is going to be needed for this particular, for this particular practical, okay? So what type of hemolysis are you looking at at the arrow? Tell me. Beta, very good. Mm -hmm. What type of media is used? Blood auger, very good. Is is blood auger selective differential enriched or a combination thereof? Enriched, correct, and differential. Very good, Mercy. Very good, very good. Nice, nice. What what percentage of red blood cells is put into the media? Five percent. Very nice. You guys are ready already, Mercy. Very good. So what type of hemolysis is being looked at here? Alpha, beta, gamma? Alpha, very good, alpha. And what does that mean? Does that mean complete, no reaction, or does it mean partial? Right, very good, very good. So if I ask a question on the practical, what what does that mean, right? What what does the What is indicated by the reaction? I don't, not looking for alpha, beta, gamma, I'm looking for, I'm looking for partial breakdown, right? If I say, what's the reaction, alpha, beta, gamma, right? But that, there's, there's a difference, right? So don't let the word indicate confuse you. Indicate means what does it mean, okay? That's clinical talk. That's going to be used everywhere, nursing, surge deck, everybody, okay? Good. So when you walk into a room and the doctor says, you know, what is indicated by, you know, the hypertension you're, you're seeing your patient experience, you know, you can say, well, you know, I just gave them a little bit of this. It might have increased the blood pressure. You, you know, you're going to have to communicate on those levels with them. So you might as well get, you might as well get used to that here, right? When it's low stakes, right? Person's life isn't at stake right now. Okay? Questions. All right, so check it out. Uh, based on the observations above, you have a hemolytic activity. What's the hemolytic activity? Beta, very good. Is it sensitive or resistant to the A disc? Sensitive, very good. Therefore, if you have a ground positive coccus, it's catalase negative, it's beta hemolytic and sensitive to the A disc. What's the genus and the species of the organism that's being represented on this plate? Streptococcus pyogenes, that is correct. Those are the kinds of questions you're going to get. Okay? All right, here we go. Mm-hmm. Yep. So check it out. So, again, blood auger. What type of hemolytic activity are you seeing? Alpha, very good. Sensitive or resistant to the P-disc? sensitive. What is on the P-disc? Specifically, what is on the P-disc? Oh, no, the P-disc, not, not the, not the play. Optogen is correct. Optogen, very good. So if you have an organism that has a gram-positive coccus catalase negative, it's alpha hemolytic and sensitive to the P-disc, what's the genus of the species of the organism represented on a plate? Streptococcus pneumoniae, very good, Miss Mercy. What group is that, Mercy? No, not group D, but thank you for playing. Anybody else want to try? It's not groupable, Mercy. <laughs> Mercy, change your mind. Very good, it's, it's not groupable, yeah, because it has a capsule, and a capsule is hiding those C carbohydrates, right? So you can't get to them, very good. Hey, what was the name of the ver... No, it's not tricky, it's critical thought. So, yeah, I, yeah, it's interesting. What 
is the matrix? What did I missed it. Oh, okay, hold on, James. I didn't catch you. I was busy thinking about what's going on. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to confuse anybody. Uh, the you're talk, you you said you posted it with like a matrix that had like all this information on it. It has a lot of it. James, you, uh, there's a lot of like crackling going on with, with your mic or something, buddy. I don't know what's going on. But yeah, there's a matrix. It's pretty good. It has a lot of this stuff on it, right? So um, if you are short for studying, that's what you ought to study because that's going to help a lot. Uh, but it doesn't have everything, right? I, these are just things that, that were important that I put down on that. But it covers everything for the, for the practical unit. And so, James, I sent it to you as an email. I also have it under announcement, and it's under labs uh, there also. So there's three different places you can get it. Okay? James. Yeah. If you can't find it, James, let me know, and I will send it to you personally. Okay? All right. Let's go on. All right. Oh, so is this organism sensitive or resistant to the P-disc? It's resistant. Very good. It's resistant. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. Let's go on. All right. This is the oxidase test. Hey, what is the reagent in the oxidase test? The oxidase reagent. Very good. Very good. Mercy, you've been studying already. So... The culture turned purple within 15 seconds. Look at there. I said, is it positive or is it negative? What is the result? Positive or negative? Good. It's positive. What does that mean? What is indicated by a positive? What is indicated by a It's a non-enteric. I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. And that means that it has the cytochrome C oxidase, uh, oxidase enzyme in it, right? So if it is oxidase negative, what's indicated by the fact that it's oxidase negative? It's an enteric, right? And therefore, it's a facultatively anaerobic organism. I like it or not. Now, I'm not going to ask um, for that particular question, which organism produces a bluish-green pigment, because I didn't really cover that this semester. Uh, and so I'm not going to – I won't ask that question. Okay. All right. Let's go on. So – this is mannitol salt auger. So let's just review mannitol. I know there's some questions here. We'll get to them. But um, uh, mannitol salt. So what is added to the media that makes it selective? What is added to the media? No, that makes it differential. Salt. Hey, but you got to tell me what percentage, Mercy. What percentage? So it's, 7.5% salt, right? Very good. And now a um, couple people answered mannitol. That's what makes it differential. So selective means that it's only going to allow certain organisms to grow. It's going to select for certain organisms, all right? But differential is going to differentiate based on a action or a color change of the media. Right? What's the pH indicator in mannitol salt agar? You know, red. Very good. Very good. Very good. And what does the yellow indicate in the quadrant one? What does that indicate? That's a mannitol fermenter. Very good. Oh, not alkaline. It's yellow. Remember, remember, uh, with mannitol salt, when it's yellow, it means that there's an acidic end product. When it's kind of red or orange, like it is there, um, then it's neutral, and when it's hot pink, the fuchsia, it's alkaline, right? Good? Very good. So what is the only organism that we study that is a staphylococcus that ferments mannitol, which is the only one? What is the only one? Staphylococcus, Justin, that's right. So you should know that. You should know that, right? So a lot of times when you know the name of the media, mannitol salt auger, you know the important components of it, right? Blood auger, you know the blood's really important, right? Mannitol salt auger, MSA, you know that mannitol and salt are really important. They do different things, 
right? But they're really important. Okay, good. So let's go on. Phenol ethanol auger. What is um well, what <laughs> what does PEA stand for? Phenol ethanol auger, right? Yeah. What's the purpose of this medium? What's the purpose of it? What's the purpose of the media? Select for gram positives. Very good. How does it interfere the gram negative? What does it do? It inhibits what? Nelda. Don't leave me hanging, Nelda. Tell me, tell me the whole story. Now, but 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 oh, the DNA synthesis, Mercy. Look at you. Very good. Very good, very good. Now, does it kill gram negatives? No, what does it do? It just inhibits. Nelda said it just inhibits. Right? I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Very good. Now, if you have this plate in the, in the lab for three weeks, is it still good to use? No, it has to be fresh. It has to be fresh. You have to freshly make it. Okay? So it should be no older than, say, maybe three or four days. After that, all the alcohol is volatilized from it. Okay? Good. Check it out. EMB. What does EMB stand for? Eosin methylene blue. Very good, Mercy. So look at that. Eosin methylene blue. Those are the important components of it, right? What is eosin in this media? What does it do? What is eosin in the media? What does it do? It's a pH indicator. Very good. Oh, um, it, maybe it does a little bit of that, but look, Keisha, it, Keisha it's, it's number one function is it's a pH indicator. What methylene blue? What about methylene blue? What does methylene blue do? What does methylene blue do? What does methylene blue do? It's also a pH. I like that, but it does something else. It does inhibit the gram process, right? So this particular media is selective for gram negatives, right? What is the principal substrate in EMB? Lactose. Lactose is king, right? Lactose is king. In both hectoin, EMB, and McConkie, lactose is the principal substrate. Very good. And when you have a metallic green sheen up there, what organism is indicated? Right, right. E. coli, very good. And what is this particular medium designed to do? What is the medium designed to do? Test bodies of water, Barbara. Look at you. Barbara made me happy today. One point for everybody on practical three. Like it. Very good. Nice job, Barbara. Okay? Anybody questions? All right, let's go on. Makankiaga. Right. So A or B, which one is a lactose fermenter? A or B? Which one is a lactose fermenter? B. Very good. Very good. Very B. What's the principal substrate? What's the principal? Okay, you guys are going too fast for me. Lactose, very good. What is Okay, so bile salts and crystal violet are added to the media. Why are bile salts and crystal violet added to the media? Inhibit gram positive. Very good, very good, very good. And which one, A or B, is a non lactose fermenter? A. Very good, very good. What type of media is it? Is it selective, enriched, or differential, or a combination of the, of the, of the, of the different terms? It's selective and differential. Very good, Justin. Tino, very good, very good. But so, Lakeisha, remember, there's there, the, the word combo is not going to be there. It's going to be selective differential, so be sure you pick that one. Okay. And what is the reason that people use Makanki What is What is its application? What is its application? Kind of all clinical specimens. Very good, very good. But not stools but not stools, right? Stools are, well, we use hectoin and teric auger, or shigella salmonella auger is another word, another name that they use for it, okay? Good? All right, let's go on. All right, we'll check it out here. 
the catalase test. What is the reagent for the catalase test? Hydrogen peroxide, very good, Barbara. What is the uh, substrate for the catalase test? Mercy, hydrogen peroxide, very good. Barbara, look at you. Very nice, very nice. A or B, which one represents streptococcus? B. A or B, which one represents micrococcus? A, very good. A or B, which one represents enterococcus? B. A or B, which one represents staphylococcus? Good. Very good. Very good. So, true or false, you should always perform a catalase test with a wooden stick or a plastic applicator. True or false? True. Why, why not use metal? Why not use metal? Yeah, metal will give you a false positive. Very good. True or false? You should always perform a catalase test from a selective differential medium. True or false? Not true. False, false, false. So a selective and differential media might interfere with the test. So you should always just use a recovery medium only. Okay? Very good. Any questions? Hey, so true or false? Uh, catalase test can be used to differentiate gram-negative bacteria. True or false? False. Only gram positive coxy. Everything else is going to be positive. Okay? Good. I like it. Let's go on. All right. So this is the uh, What genus is it specifically used to identify? Staph aureus. Very good, Mercy. Mercy, you've earned one point for the entire class. That's two points a day that you've earned if you're here when I call your name later. Okay, all right. So, and what is the mechanism of action for the staphylotech? What is the mechanism of action for the staphylotech? Look at you, Mercy. One point for everybody. Now there's three. That's it. I'm not going to give any more. That's that's right, James. It's an antigen antibody test. That is correct. That is correct. That's what. Ms. Mercy was saying antigen antibody. Very good. I like it a lot. Okay. Oh, well, looky here. What is this test called? That's okay, James. James, you'll learn more if you don't know something and you try, even though you're correct. Okay, what is this test called? Kirby Bauer. Look at you, Lakeisha. I like it like it a lot. Okay, good. What is this growth here called? What is this growth here called? Oh, excuse me one minute. What is this growth here called? What is that called? All this growth. That looks like a 251. What is all this growth called? What is that called? Alon. Also known as confluent or a monolayer, but it's all the same. That's good. Very good. What is this clearing called? What is a clearing called? Zone of inhibition, right? Zone of inhibition, very good. And in order to be, in order to be sure, you have to measure the zone and compare it, compare it to a standard, right? Good. So, um, if we were looking at this, and I said just based on the zone, which one do you think would be most effective? SSS, P, S, or C, I, X? Which one? P. Very good. Which one would be totally resistant? Top right. Okay, I like that. Which one would be totally resistant? SSS. Very good. And what about CIX? What's the result there? What about CIX? What's the result there?
uh, resistant, a breakthrough. Very good. Both of those are correct. Partially resistant. You know, um, Justin, at this point, I would not even go there because some physicians might say, well, it works somewhat. I would just call it resistant, right? So I, I can see why you said that, Mercy and Justin, but um, it's just resistant because there's breakthrough and some of that breakthrough is really close to the actual disc that has the antibiotic, right? But that is breakthrough. We call it, that's what it is, okay? Lucia, that is correct, okay? Good. All right, can you give me two reasons why you might be seeing uh, colonies in that zone around CIX? Can you give me... Can you give me a couple of reasons why that might be? Oh, I like it. So that is a third generation cephalosporin. So beta lactamase is correct. Organism is somewhat that too. Yeah, those are two good ones. The other one might be there might be two organisms, right? There might be two different organisms, right? It might be contaminated, but those are all really good. Hey, in order to be sure that we are challenging the antibiotic on the disc properly, we have to employ a standard of turbidity to make sure that we get the right amount of of uh, the the amount the the correct quantity of microorganisms that are placed on a plate. And what is that standard of turbidity called? A oh, McFarland standard. See how much you know. See how much you know. I don't even know. Yeah, very good. Okay. Okay, well, we covered all this. Oh, Hector 1 and Tarek Auger. What's the pH? What is the pH indicator in Hector 1 and Tarek Auger? Bromothamo blue. That's correct. Very good. What is the indicator that allows you to appreciate the formation of hydrogen sulfide? Arr, very good, very good. And what is the result for these colonies right here? Will you tell me, please? Ah, uh, what? It, yeah, it's not just positive. You can't say that. What is it? A lactose. Oh, that's Nelda. That's good. It's a it's a lacto. It's a non lactose fermenter. And H2S, mercy, merciful heavens. But it's not a lactose fermenter. It's a non-lactose fermenter. A lactose fermenter would look like that. Are you with me? This is a non-lactose fermenter. And so Nell is correct. I would ask that question, what potential pathogen is this? And that's salmonella. Right, we have to work it up a little further. Okay? Very good. All right. So then this is a lactose fermenter. Okay, so what group of organisms does Hector one enteric auger used for? Gram pause, gram neg. Gram neg, gram, gram negative, right? It's, it's inhibitory gram positives, right? Very good. And what is the application for Hector one enteric auger? What is the application? Stools. Poop. Very good. Very nice. Uh, ooh, looky here. An, an enteric culture gave the following results. Gram positive coxy, gamma, or alpha hemolytic, bacitracin negative, optogen negative, bile escalin slant, completely black, 6.5 turbid. What's the most likely genus and species of the organism growing in this particular scenario? There's a lot of stuff on here, but group DNA or cacus, very good, Barbara. But so there's a lot of stuff on here, but you just have to really hone on in what is important. And it's these last two, right from that chart that I told you to be sure you knew. That's also on the matrix. Okay. So here is an organism that's beta hemolytic, gram positive. Right, that's found in the group B Streptococcus. What is the species? What is the species? I mean, I finally asked a question you didn't know. 
the answer to? Is that right? It's Streptococcus agalacti. Okay. All right. Throat culture gave the following gram positive coxine, right? Beta hemolytic. Catalase negative. Bacitracin sensitive or susceptible. What's the genus in this species? Streptococcus pyogenes, very good, Barbara. And what group does that belong to? What group? Group A. There's a reason it's the A disc, right? Good. All right. A skin swab gave the following results: gram positive, coccus, catalase positive. It's a halo file. What is a halo file? What is a halo file? Love salt, very good. It ferments mannitol. Based on that, what's the likely genus and species? What's the likely genus and species? What's the likely genus and species? Staphylococcus aureus. Very good, very good. Okay, I'm not gonna do that because I didn't create any questions around that, so there's no reason for us to discuss that. Nope. Nope. What is the application for the catalase test? What is it used for? What is the what is the test used for? Differentiate gram positive coxine. I like it. Very good. And then what's the application for the oxidase test? Typically, right? No, hydrogen peroxide is the reagent for the catalase. For the oxidase test, the reagent is the oxidase reagent. But what's the applica application means? What is it used for? What does it do? Aerobic versus, that's right. That, Mercy, you went, the, you went the hard way, aerobic versus facultatively anaerobic. The other way you could say is that, um, is, um, that it's enteric, not enteric. Yep, yep, James, it's when you use the tandem, when you use um, mild escalin and 6.5 on that presentation for those two groups in tandem. Yep, okay. I like that too, Nelda. Um, I like that too. But it's better to say um, either what Mercy said, aerob aerobic, faculty, or, or enteric, non-enteric, okay? So are there any other... Any other questions that you might have about the information that will be on? It's gonna be multiple choice. Now, I'm gonna tell you right now, folks, when you go to the nursing program and uh, they're gonna ask you about your practicals, tell them you had at least one practical that was written. Okay, I, I uh... <sighs> anyway, okay. Any Anybody, anybody have any other?